there's a sense in which you might say we should allow a kind of stratospheric sulfate injection performed by a major power, even if that major power intended to engage in genocidal geoengineering. It seems pretty clear that no nation, however powerful, is in a position to do these things unilaterally on its own, so it's going to have to be an international decision capability. Are we willing to consider, say, carbon dictatorships where most of humanity live in a terrible slave-like consideration, uh, sort of situation, or do we um, draw lines at some point? Geoengineering programs are designed to change our climate, change our planet's temperature, and literally manipulate uh, the weather of our planet. And because of that, and because they're ongoing, it's literally impossible to get an accurate temperature reading or determine whether the planet's warming or cooling. They've been ongoing for several years, and they've been left out of all climate models. It makes climate models uh, flawed at best, but by those who are in the know of geoengineering programs, it literally makes them fraudulent. The problem being global suggests that the solution has to be global as well. So you cannot control the weather of the planet by passing an ordinance in Detroit, for example. You have to do it at the national level, which might take care of a continent, but ideally it goes eventually to international ordinances and controls and regulations and taxes and all that sort of thing. So from the very beginning, the United Nations and the international governing bodies have been very interested in this issue for that reason. Scientists and governments uh, around the world are working quickly to establish global climate agreements. And if passed, it likely will make geoengineering programs legal, which in turn will most likely uh, make it impossible for us to file lawsuits and take legislative action. It will also circumvent our constitution here in the United States and take away the sovereignty of nations around the world. The sovereignty of the United States is being eroded by these international, supranational uh, conventions and treaties and agreements. In terms of the legislation on the impact of the energy companies, on the forefront it looks like a tax to their profits, but in reality it's a whole new marketplace for them to exploit. And this new thing about commoditizing carbon is a very big deal. It's immense. The amount of money that it's going to extract from companies or also create new money because of new innovations. To commoditize carbon is, is a new billion dollar business. So it, the governments around the globe are by far the, the largest beneficiaries monetarily. The majority of what we're seeing out there is coming from boats out in the ocean. They're rising out huge quantities of aerosols into the stratosphere and coming over us. What we're going to do is take an airplane up. We're going to first of all photograph them dispersing these aerosols up into the air and we're also we have a col uh, collection device so we're going to go up into the chem cloud or into the aerosol we're going to take a sample and we believe that this is very important our, our elected officials and scientific community are using the contrail argument as their plausible deniability they're saying that what we're seeing in the skies are simply condensation trails we can get proof positive out there with photographs testing the aerosols, that will change the course of everything. The cap over the atmosphere is modifying the weather and it's, it's creating a situation below it that's actually increasing the heat retention. Uh, when you put that together with HARP and the moving the jet stream into the polar vortex, that's changing all of our climate across the whole United States. It's drying out California. It's, it's soaking the Midwest, it's freezing the East, uh, and I firmly believe that that is the cause of most of our weather problems. Well, our climate is changing, mostly from the geoengineering programs that are ongoing. The California drought uh, relates to Agenda 21 because it's a further removal of the rights of the people. It's a further gathering of resources and putting them into private control and private um, corporations um, in this drought and, and with the executive order they are basically making water the next oil and what will happen is that the downside of that is that the rate payers the people who use water are going to get an incredible increase in their water rate. We demand that all geoengineering programs are stopped, that all climate mandates are rescinded. If these climate agreements go through it will dramatically change the way that we, we live creating many damages. Based on the fact that these 
uh, models are comp they're, they're flawed. They're missing the big elephant in the room, which is geoengineering. And because we can prove that, we feel the most effective way to move forward with a class action lawsuit is addressing the fact that climate change cannot be determined based on the fact that ongoing geoengineering programs have been ongoing for several years. Our drought and the floods and all the rest of the problems are engineered.